Ever wondered why modularity is so crucial in the world of software engineering? It's like building a puzzle where each piece has its precise place and purpose. Imagine a software system as a colossal puzzle. Modularity is the practice of breaking it down into smaller self-contained puzzle pieces or modules. Each module is responsible for a specific set of functionalities. They're designed to be independent, yet interact seamlessly through well-defined interfaces. This approach allows for easier development, maintenance, and scalability of software systems. Just like how it's simpler to handle one puzzle piece at a time, managing smaller modules is more manageable than grappling with an entire system at once. So the magic of modularity lies in its ability to simplify complex systems, while enhancing their adaptability and efficiency. Now that we understand what modularity is, let's delve into its key aspects. The first key aspect of modularity we're exploring today is decomposition. Decomposition is the process of breaking down a complex system into smaller, more manageable modules. This is akin to taking apart a puzzle and studying each piece individually. In the context of software engineering, each module corresponds to a distinct piece of the puzzle, each responsible for a specific set of functions or features. One of the primary benefits of decomposition is that it aids in identifying and isolating specific functionalities. This simplification makes it easier to understand, develop, and maintain the system. It's like tackling one section of the puzzle at a time, rather than trying to solve the entire thing at once. You're able to focus on each piece in isolation, ensuring it fits just right. Decomposition, in essence, is a way of taming complexity. It helps us manage the intricacies of a system by breaking it down into smaller, more digestible parts. Decomposition, therefore, acts as the foundation of modularity. Moving on, let's discuss encapsulation. Encapsulation, at its core, is about hiding complexity. Imagine each module as a little black box. You don't need to know how it works inside, you just need to know what it does. That's encapsulation. It hides the internal details of a module, exposing only the necessary interfaces, or the controls, if you will. This concept is akin to using a remote control. You don't need to understand the intricate electrical circuits within, you just press the buttons to change channels or adjust the volume. In software terms, these buttons represent the interfaces a module provides. Encapsulation promotes a few key principles in software engineering. It encourages information hiding, keeping the internal workings of a module out of the public eye. It upholds separation of concerns, ensuring each module has a specific job. And it fosters reusability, as modules can be used in different contexts, without revealing their internal complexity. Encapsulation, thus, is a crucial aspect that ensures the smooth functioning of modules. Next in line is abstraction. In the world of software engineering, abstraction is like a magician's trick. It allows developers to focus on the show's essential tricks while hiding all the behind-the-scenes details. Abstraction is the technique of concealing the complexity of a module, allowing us to focus on the high-level functionality. It's all about hiding the nitty-gritty, the unnecessary details that can often overwhelm and distract from the main event. Now, how does this relate to modularity? Well, modules provide abstract interfaces that allow users to interact with them. These interfaces are like the face of the module, showing only what's necessary and keeping the rest hidden. This means that users can effectively interact with the module without needing to understand every intricate detail of the underlying implementation. In this way, abstraction acts as a powerful tool, simplifying the process of user-module interaction. Abstraction therefore simplifies the user-module interaction. Now, let's talk about two interrelated aspects, coupling and cohesion. Coupling and cohesion might sound like complicated terms, but they're actually quite straightforward. Coupling refers to the degree of interdependence between modules. In a perfectly modular system, we aim for low coupling. This means modules are loosely connected, allowing for independent changes without causing a domino effect. On the other hand, cohesion is all about how closely related the elements within a module are. High cohesion is desirable because it means that the elements within a module work closely together towards a common purpose. Imagine a well-oiled machine where every gear and lever has a specific role, but they all work together in harmony. That's a system with low coupling and high cohesion. In software engineering, achieving low coupling and high cohesion isn't always easy, but it's always worth striving for. It leads to cleaner, more efficient and more maintainable code. 
Remember, low coupling and high cohesion are the key to a well-structured modular system. Now that we know the key aspects, let's understand how to achieve modularity. To create modular software systems, we rely on techniques like functional decomposition, object-oriented design, and service-oriented architecture. Functional decomposition involves breaking down a system into smaller self-contained functions or procedures. Each function does one specific task, making the system easier to understand and manage. On the other hand, object-oriented design is all about grouping related functions and data into objects. These objects can interact with each other, promoting reusability and maintainability. Service-oriented architecture is another method that structures applications as a collection of services. These services are independent and can be used in various parts of the system, making it highly flexible and scalable. Each of these techniques provides a unique way to structure software systems into modular components, promoting understandability, reusability, and maintainability. These techniques, when applied correctly, can greatly enhance the modularity of a system. You might be wondering why go through all this trouble? Well, the benefits of modularity are manifold. Let's start with simplicity and understandability. Modularity, by breaking down a complex system into smaller, more manageable modules, reduces the complexity. This makes it easier for developers to grasp the structure, behavior and interactions of the system. It's like trying to understand a city by exploring one neighborhood at a time, rather than trying to comprehend the entire city all at once. Next up is reusability. Think of modules as Lego blocks. Once you've built one, you can use it over and over again in different structures. In the same way, modular components can be reused across different parts of a system or even in other projects. This not only saves development time and effort, but also promotes consistency and reduces the risk of errors. Now, let's talk about maintainability. In a modular system, changes can be localized to specific modules without affecting the entire system. This makes it easier to debug, test and update software systems without introducing unintended side effects. It's like fixing a flat tire on a bike without needing to dismantle the entire bike. Scalability is another significant benefit. Modularity allows systems to grow and evolve incrementally. New functionality can be added by introducing new modules or extending existing ones without impacting the overall system architecture. This flexibility allows a system to adapt and scale in response to changing needs and conditions. Finally, there's flexibility and adaptability. In a rapidly changing world, the ability to adapt is crucial. Modular systems are more flexible and adaptable to changes in requirements, technologies or environments. Modules can be replaced, upgraded or modified independently, allowing the system to evolve over time, much like updating apps on your smartphone. As you can see, modularity brings numerous benefits to the table, making it an essential aspect of software engineering. So, we've covered a lot of ground today, haven't we? Let's take a moment to gather our thoughts and revisit the key aspects of modularity in software engineering that we've delved into. Firstly, we explored decomposition, the practice of breaking down a system into smaller, more manageable modules. This process aids in isolating specific functionalities, simplifying the understanding, development and maintenance of the system. Next, we delved into encapsulation, a technique that conceals a module's inner workings while exposing only the necessary interfaces. This approach encourages information hiding, separation of concerns and reusability. We then moved on to the concept of abstraction, which enables developers to concentrate on essential concepts while masking unnecessary details. This principle allows users to interact with a module without needing to comprehend its underlying implementation. We also discussed coupling and cohesion, two critical aspects of modularity. Coupling refers to the interdependence between modules, while cohesion pertains to how elements within a module relate to each other. The goal is to strive for high cohesion and low coupling to ensure each module serves a single purpose and can be modified independently. In our exploration of modularization techniques, we discovered that functional decomposition, object-oriented design, and service-oriented architecture provide valuable guidelines for creating cohesive, loosely coupled modules. Lastly, we touched on the benefits of modularity, including simplicity, reusability, maintainability, scalability, and adaptability. Modularity reduces complexity, promotes reusability, facilitates maintenance, enables scalability, and fosters adaptability, all of which are crucial in the ever-evolving landscape of software engineering.
In essence, modularity is a fundamental principle that shapes the way we engineer software. It's not just about creating separate components, it's about designing a system where each module serves a specific purpose and interacts seamlessly with others. Remember, modularity isn't just a concept, it's a philosophy that can transform the way we approach software engineering. So let's embrace this philosophy and continue to build better, more efficient and sustainable software systems.